So my name is Greg Larson. I'm a researcher at Caltrans, which is also known as the California Department of Transportation. And I want to caveat my presentation today by saying that I am not the subject matter expert on this topic. Um, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Kun Zhao of the California PATH program at UC Berkeley and Professor Matt Barth of, at UC Riverside's College of Engineering Center for Environmental Research and Technology were not available. They are the subject matter experts. I have a breadth of knowledge uh, and I understand the concepts of, of this topic, but I do not have the depth of knowledge that they have and I'm certain that there are many folks on the phone who know more about this topic than me. But having said that, let's move along. So I'm going to start out by talking a little bit about GPS in general, and I think um, many people on the call probably understand GPS and how it works. I'm going to follow up that with uh, some discussion about the different ways there are of, um, of correcting position, uh, and then talk a little bit about our test bed in California that, um, that we're using to do some experiments with this topic, um, and then finally uh, a little bit about the onboard units. Um, but to, to, to jump into the background, um, the, the map message uh, is broadcast to the vehicles, and the vehicles uh, use that uh, to enable applications, both for safety and mobility. And in order to make use of the map, they need to know where they are uh, very accurately um, with, uh, for many applications uh, with lane level precision. And so what we're, what we're going to talk about today is uh, corrections to the um, GPS signal that they are getting um, in the vehicle already uh, that enabled them to get that lane level positioning in a way that's uh, continuous, reliable, and accurate. Um, because GPS, as you'll see in, in the following slides, is not always, does not always have those characteristics. And um, I, we, we mentioned RTCM. Just for your information, RTCM stands for Radio Technical Commission for Maritime Services. So it, it's, a, it's a standards development organization um, that's primarily related to uh, maritime, um, but it does provide uh, um, a mechanism that the auto industry has been using to correct uh, the positioning they're getting from their local GPS uh, to give them lane level positioning accuracy. And, and we're, we would be broadcasting this correction uh, to the vehicles using DSRC. So just to give you a little bit of information about G, how GPS works, there's a constellation of uh, 31 satellites, um, at least operated by the United States, that are orbiting the Earth. Um, the satellites are transmitting a signal and their, um, about their position and their time and a GPS receiver needs to pick, pick up at least four of those satellites, and, and ideally um, with, a, um, with a, a, a geometry that um, can give them an accurate position, as you'll see in the next slide. But you see um, satellites can you locate you on a sphere and then a circle and then uh, two places on Earth, and then finally the fourth satellite gives you the exact location. So. Um, with basic GPS service without any kind of enhancements or augmentation, 95% uh, of the time you will be within about 10 meters um, of, of accuracy. You could get it, be as low as five depending on the geometry of the satellite constellation or as, as uh, far away as 40 meters from where your position is located or is shown. And there are a number of uh, factors that can affect the accuracy of your, your data. Um, and you can see one of the things, uh, one of the items is the geometry. When the satellites are spread out but not too far spread out, you get good um, positioning. When they are clustered together, you are not as accurate. And then finally, um, multipath. If the signal from the satellite is bouncing off objects on the Earth before it's being received by your, um, your B GPS receiver, then it can also impact the accuracy that you get from the GPS. Um, so the, and there's a link here that shows you, um, that talks about that effect. Um, there's different ways of uh, improving the accuracy of GPS. Um, one of the most 
rudimentary is uh, differential GPS. So you have a base station at a known location. Um, it's it's getting it's it's usually a high accuracy uh, base station. So and it knows the position, its own position, and it's sending a correction message to roving GPS. A lot of uh, applications for, for example, um, uh, surveying and agriculture are using this type of um, correction. Um, there's also real-time kinematic, and, and as we go through, I'll be talking about the RTK uh, method that we're using in our test bed um, to correct position. Uh, so we, one of the ways of getting um, the RTCM correction is through a protocol called NTRIP, Network Transport of RTCM via Internet Protocol. And it is a, a protocol for streaming the position correction over the Internet um, in accordance with the, the standards that have been um, developed by RTCM. So you see in this diagram, um, there, are, there is a, an architecture that includes the sources, which would be the base stations that are um, transmitting their data to servers. Um, and then those are, in turn, sent to casters that can broadcast the, that correction to local clients. Um, and again, there's a reference to um, more information on this. It is an open standard, and there are um, there is software available um, for free that can enable you to take advantage of this service. So the the current standard for RTCM is 10403.x, and um, it defines message structures for the real-time kinematic applications and supports GPS and GLONASS, which is the Russian version of uh, GPS. Um, the messages are in three different types, and you need to get at least one message from each of those types. One category is observations, another is station coordinates, and finally antenna descriptions. And the next slide describes uh, these. And actually, I'm going to click once more. Um, so that you see the three groups, observation, station coordinates, and antenna descriptions, and the message types. For, for the application that we have in mind, the minimum is uh, type 1002, uh, which has um, code carrier-based um, uh, requirements. Uh, then on station attributes, um, you need to know the antenna reference position. And then finally, uh, an antenna descriptor as a minimum requirement. And you'll see that in the testing that we've done, um, we are actually using a higher um, standard than that. Uh, but it's important to note that with the, in these message groups, the higher the number, the more, uh, the larger the data size. So there are balance. Uh, uh, there's there's a a, a trade-off for um, using the higher accuracy. Um, you see here, there is a there is accommodation for RTCM within the SAJ2735 message frame, um, <clears throat> and it requires the the intrip client that I mentioned earlier. Um, and it, there are two options for doing this, and I'll talk about both of these. One is to use the roadside units uh, built-in application and the Roadside units typically have that. They may not be capable of supporting the, the latest version of RTCM. A second is to host the client on a separate processor, which is the way that we have uh, done this. And you see um, on the right side of, of this slide um, the ASN.1 AS um, syntax for RTCM. Um, in order to broadcast RTCM, you need to identify a nearby base station, uh, preferably within uh, 50 kilometers, and that supports the current um, standard. Uh, you need to create an account, and in many cases, you can find a service that's free. I, I know 
um, within California, because of uh, the earthquakes we have here, there are, uh, there are a large number of NTRIP um, casters that are available for free service. And I know in other places, for example, Minnesota, because of their agricultural um, needs, has a number of um, free services that are available. And I, I think in different parts of the country, it's not that difficult to find a, um, a nearby uh, free source of, N, uh, of, of RTCM correction. Um, you need to set up the streaming service or s streaming system on a, on a computer um, that can act as a server and the NTRIP caster. Uh, there's README instructions, and um, once you start it up, it's um, pretty much set it and forget it. Um, you really don't need to know that much about NTRIP or the standard itself or even the uh, SAE message set in order for to make this work. Um, so I talked about two options. The first is to take advantage of uh, firmware that's built into the RSUs. Um, again, the, the potential downside of this is that it, the um, firmware may not be up to date. Um, the RTCM standard um, is, is a living thing, and it, it has changed in the recent past. Um, the second option is to host it on a separate processor, which is the way we've done it um, in, in our MITS application, similar to what um, Chuck described in Utah. Um, so you can uh, click on this link to get the Intrip uh, client um, and then create the uh, software that you need within your separate processor to support it. Um, so we, again, use this, this uh, option because it gives us better control of the sources of data. Now, I'll talk a little bit about our test bed. Um, for those of you familiar with the area, this, this is located in Palo Alto. Um, the upper left corner is the south east corner of um, Stanford University, just to give you a perspective of where we're at. Uh, the green dots are the current up and operational um, intersections. Red dots are the ones that we're planning on on adding to the uh, corridor soon. Um, it's about a little over two miles long. Right now it has 11 intersections. Carries about 50,000 vehicles per day, so it's a fairly um, busy arterial. Um, and it is operating, it is running the MITS applications, um, including ISIG, uh, which is adaptive traffic signal control, and the two um, signal priorities for transit and for freight as well as a pedestrian um, uh, safety application for crossing. Um, you see on the right side of this slide uh, a uh, photo of the installation. There's two DSRC antennas out on the signal mast arm, and the top box in this photo is the current um, Savari radio. The bottom box is an older um, Denso radio that was used initially. Um, so the radio's on the mast and the antennas are on the mast arm. Currently there's 11 intersections. By the, by the end of this spring we'll have 17. Currently the uh, roadside units are complying with version 3.1 of the FHWA spec, FHWA spec, and we will be converting to version 4.1. Um, the MITS roadside processor uses um, a, a these versions of Linux that are shown here, and we're broadcasting the map message, the SPAT message, signal status message, and RTCM from the intersection in accordance with the uh, 2016 version of J2735, which is the latest. We do not have the luxury of the fiber that the folks, the lucky folks in Utah have, so we are using a wireless backhaul using 4G and LTE. And you see the the website here for uh, the test bed, and you can look at the real-time um, health, see which radios are up and running, and how many uh, BSMs they're receiving, how many uh, SPAT and MAP messages they sent out, uh, as well as additional information if you have an interest in taking a look. Um, this is the, these are the messages, and again, for uh, for broadcast from the RSU, RSU, we are sending the map message, signal phase, and timing 
signal status message and our TCM corrections. And vehicles that are equipped can receive the basic safety or uh, can will broadcast the basic safety message and a signal request message for um, for requesting uh, priority, for example, at the intersection. And you see under RTCM, we are using type four or type 1004, 1006, and 1008, which again are the higher level of um, uh, accuracy for RTCM. Uh, so as far as the, the entrance server, we are using the nearby uh, Jasper Ridge, which is operated by UC Berkeley and Stanford University. As you can see, it's fairly close to the proximity of the, of the test bed, about five miles away. Um, the Entrip caster is located at the PATH headquarters in Richmond, so there's an internet connection between the um, Entrip server and the Entrip caster at PATH, and then there's a cellular connection back to the individual intersections to, um, to give them the information they need to broadcast um, RTCM. And uh, this is just the architecture, um, shows the onboard unit um, and the process we're going through and um, processing the RTCM correction and getting the, uh, um, improving the position. Um, and then some more, a little bit deeper dive into what's inside um, the, there's DSRC connecting the roadside unit and the onboard unit. Um, again, the message is encoded in the, using the standard and broadcast. Um, and then I'm, I'm nearly done, but the whole reason for this is, again, lane level positioning. And, and so it is intended to be received um, by the armor unit and then used to correct uh, the position to hopefully get lane level positioning accuracy. Um, the, one of the problems is that there really isn't, while there is a standard for the roadside units that's maintained by Federal Highway Administration, there is no similar standard for onboard units. And in many cases, they may, be, may not be capable of handling the RTCM corrections. And I know the, the auto industry obviously has an interest in in addressing this challenge and, um, and making sure that they will be able to. Uh, it's, I think, incumbent upon us to um, do what we can on the roadside unit side and make it easier for them once um, they do reach some standards. Um, and one of the things that we're trying to do is do some experiments um, to, to determine just how well this um, this process will work. Um, so we've equipped some um, vehicles with GTA, uh, with RTK enabled GPS and, and a laptop and we are doing experiments. And as far as the status, this is my last slide. Um, we've taken a look at what we can get with the wide area augmentation system um, and that's providing like, typically two to five meter accuracy in open sky conditions. And then um, we are also working on or planning to do some RTCM version three uh, experiments. Um, we have work underway with UC Riverside to do that uh, on both um, open sky and rural canyon conditions. So that is my last slide. And so I will hand it 